Hello everyone. Wishing you all a very good morning. I hope I'm audible and visible to all of you. Yes or no? Okay. Well, uh, in the last class, yesterday's class, we were discussing potential energies and we had seen the definition of potential energy or difference in potential energy or change in potential energy. Change in any potential energy, whether it is gravitational, electrostatics or spin potential energy, it is negative of work done by that conservative force. We had also seen some simple problems. We'll again start today's uh, class with a simple problem. Let us say, for example, again, I, since we are uh, dealing with springs, we have not dealt with many problems in springs. Let me again start with a problem based on springs. Based on, based on spring. So I have a block of mass M attached to a spring of spring constant K. As you can see, the natural length of the spring is L0. Normally, the natural length of the spring is not given to you because it is not required. I'm just giving it to you so that you have an idea that sometimes the natural length of the spring might be given to you. It's of no use. It's normally not given. Anyways, um, now as you can see, this spring has been extended by a length x already in the diagram. The spring has already been extended. Now look at the question. Find the find the number one change in potential energy. Number two work done by spring if the spring if the spring is further so further is the important term here if the spring is further extended by x meters so as you can see the spring is already stretched by x meters. I'm going to stretch it by x meters more. You have to find out what is the change in the potential energy, spring potential energy, and what is the work done by the spring in this particular case. I'll give you a minute to solve it. And then I will solve it in my way one minute I hope uh, all of you have done this 
Anyone who has done the problem, can you raise hand and let me know if you've done it? Anyone has gotten any answer for this? What is the change in the potential energy and what is the work done by the spring? Anyone has an answer? I think the mic is there with you. Anyone has an answer? What is the answer? So basically, what we're going to do is, this is the initial position where this block is right now. Let me call this position as position A. And now I'm going to further extend it by an amount X. So it is here in its final position B and this length, it is further extended by X. So this is also X. I have to find the change in internal energy. So I'll solve the problem number one first. I have to find the change in internal energy. That will be equal to energy at point B minus energy at point A. B being the final position and A being the initial position. I just need to put the values. So change in internal energy will be equal to energy at point B. Point B is this green point. Point B, that is the green point. Now, when you look about the green point, you have to find out the extension. How much is the extension? In the green case, X is here and X is here. So the total extension will be 2X. Remember, whenever we are trying to find out the energy stored in a spring, it is half KX squared where x is the extension in the spring from the mean position. That means from the natural length. So this becomes half of k into 2x, which is the extension squared. I hope everyone understands this. Can I have some reason that we understand this? Why I'm using 2x? Great. Well done. Then comes the initial point. I will mark it by pink. Initial point A, initial energy UA, here is the point, here is the extension. Extension is only the pink one, not the green one. Let's find out the extension. Extension is X to minus half K X squared, the pink one. You can easily solve it, get the answer and stay happy. So this will be equal to, anyone knows it, I think, you know? three by two K X squared, right? with a positive sign and that is your final answer of change in potential energy. Once you have done that, you can now find what is the work done by spring in this case. Don't need to integrate it. Just use the concept that work done will be negative of change in kinetic change in uh, potential energy. Potential energy ka change, change in potential energy is negative of work done. So work done is negative of change in potential energy. Just put a negative sign and you get your final answer for work done by the spring, which is in blue. Calculated from the formula. And the answer is this. You will understand this. Can I have some reason that you understand this? Pakka? Okay, so this is how you can utilize the concept of potential energy or change in potential energy. We will be using this concept from here on. But as I told you before also, now also I'm telling you, this concept of potential energy is not required to solve any question in work power and energy because this is just an additional thing that we have taken. All questions can be done without even considering potential energy. Because potential energy is nothing but negative of work done by the force. So instead of calling it as change in potential energy, we have calculated it or we can calculate it in terms of work done and do the negative of that. But since we have understood this concept, some places it is easier to do it with potential energy because you understand the term potential energy. Now, what we are going to do now is, 
write some uh, important points about what we have read and how we can put it to some use. So we will write the important points that we will be solving questions on. These are the points on which you will be getting questions in the examination hall. So we'll write point wise. Okay, so we'll write it point wise and uh, let us see what is point number one or use number one for what we have understood about potential energy concept. Now, the first type of questions that can come to you in this particular uh, topic, in this particular section of the chapter, would be to find out. change in internal energy or work done because if you calculate change in internal energy that is actually equal to negative of work done so the first category of question could be to find change in internal energy or work done when force is given when force the vector form is given. We have done this many times, but again, we'll just summarize it. How will I find this out? Now we'll find it out in this way. Change in internal energy is negative of work done by the conservative force. So it will be negative of F dot dr, F dot dr calculated from the position R1 to position R2. We have already done questions on this. We will do just one of those questions again so that we can summarize everything together. Previously, we had just calculated work done. Now, apart from work done, we can also find the change in potential energy. So we'll solve a question here. If a force F is equal to 2x minus 3. Now remember, this is a one-dimensional force. I'm not going to create a three-dimensional force. Three-dimensional force will have x, y, and z component. We have to find out the work done by a three-dimensional force in different, different ways. Whether it's a conservative force, we have found out the work done. Whether it's a non-conservative force, we have found out the work done. I'm not going into all that because they are already done. Do you understand this? Do we remember this, that we have done question of this nature? Where force was three-dimensional and we had found out the work done by that force? Using integration, yes or no? I'll just, we'll just revise it. So F is 2x minus 3. This is the one-dimensional force where x is the position of the particle. The particle is moving along x-axis. Find the work done by this force. Now remember, this is the conservative force. Find the change in internal energy. It's not change in internal energy, change in potential energy. U reminds me of internal energy in thermodynamics. Find the change in potential energy and work done when this uh, force displaces the particle from origin. Origin is 0, 0. 2 x is equal to 3 meters. Find how much the potential energy has changed. How much is the work done by this conservative force? The particle has been displaced from origin to x equal to 3. One dimensional force, one dimensional displacement. The time starts now. You will get a minute to solve this question. If you have any doubts, you can always come up. I think the mic is working. So that is the good news.
Minus nine joules. I have got an answer. Well, I don't know the answer because I have not calculated it. I just read the question here. Let's see if I get an answer. So I have one answer is minus nine joules. Any other answer? Which uh, answer is minus nine joules? Whether it's change in internal energy, change in potential energy, or is it uh, the work done beta? Which answer is minus nine? Change in potential energy. Okay, let us go and solve this. Solution is pretty damn simple. I just need to calculate the change in internal energy, which is negative of work done. Just calculate any one. That will be negative of integral of f dot dr. So it will be equal to 2x minus 3 into dx. We have done it so many times. I don't think we need any elaboration on that. x is varying from 0 to 3. We just need to calculate this integral. How are we going to calculate this integral? I'll take the negative out. Uh, it will be integral of 2x dx from 0 to 3. Or oh, it's not 0, uh, it's 0 to 3. Minus 3 dx integral from 0 to 3. I hope all of us understand this very simple integral. It should not take rocket science for us to calculate this integral. So I've just taken a negative out 2x dx, integral of 2x dx, everyone knows, will be equal to 2 times x squared by 2. If you don't remember it, well, you can go and watch the lecture on integration from 0 to 3 minus 3 times. Integral of dx is x, varying from 0 to 3. I hope you can put the values, get the answer. What is the value of delta u coming as? Anyone? What is the value of change in internal change in uh, potential energy coming as? I think the answer is coming zero, right? Yes or no? Have I done any mistake? Doesn't look like change in internal energy, which is negative of work done, is nothing but equal to zero. That is the answer we were looking at. If you have anyone got this answer? Well done, beta. Well done. So that is the answer that we are looking at. Work done is also zero. Change in potential energy is also zero. It's a three-dimensional, no, it's a one-dimensional force. And we have calculated the work done in the most simple way. Anyone has any problems? Please raise your hands and ask. Anyone has any doubt? Any problems? Please raise your hands. We use the mic. And ask for your doubts. I'll give you a minute to note down the question and the solution. I hope uh, you have uh, noted it down. Simple question, simple integral. Let's move forward to the second question or second type of question that can come. In the first type, what we were doing, and let me 
just go back to the first type. In the first type of question, what we had was force F was given. F is known, as you can see here, F is known. You know the value of F? From there, you are calculating the value of change in internal energy or work done. Both mean the same thing. They are negative of each other. So force is given. That was the condition that force was given. Force was given. And we were calculating either change in internal energy or work done. Now, a question could arise. I can ask you easily. In the second type of questions, what we are going to do is that we are going to reverse everything. What do you mean by reverse? Is the reciprocal <coughs> ulta oppose it of what was point number one? So, what could be point number two? Point number two is point is opposite of point number one or vice versa, not vice versa, it's reciprocal of point number one. Now, can you give an idea? What can be point number two? In point number one, we were calculating delta U or work done when force was given to us. What are we going to do in point number two? It is the reverse of that. What do you mean by reverse of that? Can anyone tell me what will be the point number two? If I, you can tell me point number two, you will never forget it ever because for the first time you are telling me what is point number two. Anyone? What is point number two? Point number two is the reverse of that. So to find out the reverse, that means to find out force. Yes, Peter? I heard someone saying something. Anyone? To find out force when delta U or U energy is given as a function. So here what we are going to do is we are going to calculate F when delta U or U, the function of energy is given. The reverse of this. In first case, we had force which was given to us and we were calculating the change in internal and uh, change in gravitational potential energy or change in potential energy. In case number two, force is to be found out. Energy is given as a function. How do you do that? Well, to do this, we'll have to go back to something that we had done and we have to write this formula F is equal to minus of del of u by del of x i hat plus del of u by del of y j hat plus del of u by del of z k hat and if you can remember what was this del what was this del anyone remember this del can anyone tell me what is this gel? What is this gel? I can't hear you better clearly. Yes, if you are saying partial derivative, well, you are absolutely clear. Del u by del x is the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Del u by del y is the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Del u by del z is the partial derivative of u with respect to z. You can also see it in your notes. So what I'll do is I'll show you a portion of your notes, the notes that you already have. with you and here it comes this is how you can calculate force f vector from u 
which is your function of energy. F is F vector wise is minus del u by del xi, del u by del y z, no del u by del y j plus del u by del z of k. Here it is written as del. Just make the symbol as del. They written is as d. D is wrong, so it should be del. Del u by del x is partial derivative of u with respect to x, you know, keeping y and z constant. Del u by del y is a partial derivative of u with respect to y. Del u by del z is a partial derivative of u with respect to z. Please note it down. I hope all of you understand what we are writing. You must write this down and understand how we can calculate this. As you can see, to find out energy, from force you had to integrate to find out force from energy you need to differentiate but you don't differentiate it completely you differentiate it partly back bench last bench do i have your attention here last bench boys do i have your attention here are we doing what we are uh, supposed to do or are we are doing what we are not supposed to do? If you are doing something which is which you are not supposed to do, I would suggest that uh, you leave the class and have your uh, gala time outside the class. Lots of good things are happening there outside the class. So I may suggest that uh, you may like to visit the outside premise. Okay. Del u by del x, i, del u by del y, z, j, and del u by del z, k. That is how we can calculate f from energy function. Now, straight away, I'm going to give you a problem on this concept. And if you can do it correctly, that will revise a lot of things. That will revise the concept of the partial derivative which would be coming to us in many ways, many different ways. So if you can do this question, we can move further ahead. And here comes the question I hope you have noted down the formula. So now I am giving you a question now. This question is not likely to come in your JEE main. So this is basically meant for JEE advanced. That is the only platform where you can have such a question. And the question comes like this. The energy, the potential energy of some force is given by this formula. And uh, which formula should I write? I can, uh, okay. I will write it like this. X squared Y plus Y Z. The potential energy function of a force is given by this formula. Please calculate or find out the force. Okay, you don't know. The, have I told you how to calculate the derivative of uh, multiplication of two functions? Did I tell you that in that class? Derivative of multiplication of two functions? Just don't know? Okay, so then I'll, I'll change the question first. I will take this question out and I'll put a different question and I'll make the question like this. X squared plus 2Y plus 3. This is the energy function. This is the energy function of any force which is conservative in nature, can you tell me what is this force in vector form? Your time starts now. If anyone has solved this problem, I would be glad if you can tell me what is the answer for this.
Anyone with any answer? Yes, I'm waiting for your answers. Yes, beta. I cap plus two J cap. Have you forgotten something? Minus. You have forgotten the minus thing, right? So now tell me the answer. Correct answer. Minus two X I cap minus two J I cap. Uh, that is correct. Minus two X I cap minus two J cap. That is the answer. How do you do it? We just need to calculate the partial derivative of this thing with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z. Let us first do it with respect to x, del u by del x. Del u by del x. I have to calculate the partial derivative of this entire thing. For x squared, the partial derivative of x squared with respect to x will be simply equal to 2x. The partial derivative of 2y with respect to x will be 0 because it's a constant. The partial derivative of 3 with respect to x will be equal to 0. So del u by del x simply becomes 2x. Do we all understand this? Can I have some raise hand that we understand this? Everyone in the class, backbenchers. Okay, well done. Chalo. Then on similar lines, I can calculate del u by del y of this entire thing. x square ka del u by del y, x square ka del y del y will be 0 because x cannot be differentiated with respect to y. x is a constant. Derivative of 2y with respect to y would be simply equal to 2. Derivative of 3 with respect to y would be 0. So del u by del y will be simply equal to 2. Now I just put the formula in the above thing and I put it here. So my force vector f vector becomes minus 2x i minus 2j. We have calculated the force when the function of energy was given to us. If you have got this answer, congratulate yourself. Well done, beta. This is the force function. The force, the value of force calculated from the energy function. How many of you could do this question? Can you please raise hands? Two, three, four, five, six, okay. For the rest, please have a look at how it is done. If you have a problem, if you have a doubt, please feel free to come and ask it. I'll wait for a minute for you to note down the solution. And if there's any problem, any doubt, I'm here to solve it. A minute to note it down. Thank <laughs> you. 
I hope uh, you have noted it down. I'll move on to the next uh, problem. But before moving on to the next problem, I'll give you just a small note uh, regarding uh, derivative of multiplication. If I have not done it previously, I'll do it uh, now. For example, if I have two functions, a, oh, instead of writing it as a, let me, uh, let me say that I have a function of x and I have a function gx. And then I have to find derivative of d by dx of fx multiplied by gx fx multiplied by gx whether i have to find the full derivative or whether i have to find the partial derivative the formula is same in case of full derivative i have to find out the complete derivative in case of partial derivative i have to find out the partial derivative so this is multiplication of two functions how do i find the derivative of multiplication of two functions so what do i do is i multiply the first function with the derivative of the second one then I add or subtract and then I add and I add what? I add the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first function. It is as simple as that. If you have to find the partial derivative, you replace d by dx by del by del x. So d by dx can be replaced by del by del x and this formula then becomes the formula for partial derivative of the product of functions. Just replace everything by del by del x and you will have the formula for partial derivative, the product function, the product of partial, the partial derivative of product of two functions. Am I clear with what I have written here? Do we understand this? Can I have some raise hand that we understand this? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Please put your hands down. So I'm going to give you a small example of this. How I can use this? Because then the next question is based on this. So if you can so do that small example, you would be able to solve the question. So this is the question coming up your way. I have to find the d by dx or derivative of x squared sine x. I'll give you a minute. If you can do it on your own, well, you must congratulate yourselves that you have applied the formula correctly. If not, I'm always here to help you out. I'll help you out. Don't worry. A minute to win it. X square cos x plus x square cos x plus x square cos x plus x x that is absolutely correct well done beta that is absolutely correct I'm done so quickly i'll still wait for a minute for other students to catch up So as you can see here, we we'll just go ahead. X squared can be treated as the first function, which is f of x, very evident. Sine x could be treated as the second function, which is tx. Green function, pink function. Green function, pink function. So now how, how do I do it? So it will be green function. So green function is your x squared. So I'll just write x squared multiplied by derivative of multiplied by derivative of gx so multiplied by d by dx of sin x that would be my first term so this is my green this is my pink here it comes 
Then, what do I do next? Then I take the red function, which is the second function, which is nothing but sine x. I hope you are able to understand. So I'm all drawing, uh, drawing arrows everywhere so that you are able to understand, marking them out so that you are able to understand where and how functions are coming. And then I have gx ka derivative, uh, fx ka derivative. So I'll have to write d by dx of x squared. x squared is your fx. That is your green function. Everything is uh, quite uh, evident now. Derivative of sine x is cos x. x squared cos x. Oops, I am writing theta. I must write x. x squared cos x plus derivative of x squared is 2x. 2x sine x. That is the answer that I was looking for. How many of you got this answer? Please raise your hands. Oh, so many. Okay, well done. I think we had done it previously, but it's always good to have a recap. Why did we do this question? Because the next question is coming up. And the next question is all about conservative force and how are you going to calculate this conservative force from the given energy function. So here comes the question. And if you can do this, well, well done. The energy function of a force is given by x squared y. I already given this question previously, but then I change it. x squared pi, x squared y plus y z. Can you calculate the force function? The force, the conservative force whose energy is given by this formula, this equation. A minute, two minutes. The time starts now. I'm still awaiting answers from your end. Anyone with any thought on the answer?
Oh, so I'll give you one more minute. I think everyone is trying. This question is more about maths. Good morning, Guru Pim. This question is more about maths rather than physics. Physics has got really literally nothing to do with this question. If you know the formula, that is physics. Just need to calculate it. Minus 2x. Minus two x i cap i cap minus j cap minus j cap okay what about uh, z is there any z component zero minus k cap minus k cap no i think you have done a mistake somewhere small mistake somewhere anyone else would like to give any other answer or shall I solve it? I still give you a minute. One more minute. One more minute to do it. I'll be waiting. One more minute. Okay, let's try and solve it. The first thing is I am going to calculate del by del x of u. So I have to calculate the del by del x of this entire thing. If you look at the green one, I have to calculate the del by del x of this function x square y plus y z. Now x square y, if I calculate the del by del x, x square becomes first function and y becomes second function. The derivative of second function y with respect to x will be 0 because it's partial derivative. So I only need to calculate the partial derivative of x squared into y. So it will be y multiplied by derivative of x squared. So it will look like this. Partial derivative of First of all, this thing, yz with respect to x is 0, so don't worry about this. This is already out. I just need to calculate the partial derivative of this. This is a product function. One function is x squared. The other function is y. Derivative of y is 0, so this goes away. So only thing that remains is I have to find the derivative of x squared and multiply it by y. Derivative of x squared is 2x. So the partial derivative will be 2 x y do we understand this how i've calculated this i've just written the answer straight away partial derivative of y z with respect to x is zero so that is out i have to just find the partial derivative of x squared y how i've calculated it i have calculated it using the upper wala formula partial derivative of first uh, partial derivative of second function into fx that is zero because partial derivative of y is zero that goes away. Then second function, which is y multiplied by partial derivative of x squared. Partial derivative of x squared is 2x. So my final answer becomes 2xy. That is the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Do we understand this? Can I have some raise hand that we understand this? Okay. Now. Let us move on to calculate the partial derivative of u with respect to y. Again, I have two terms. One is x squared y. Okay, let me use a different color pen. One is x squared y. I have to calculate the partial derivative of this. Then the other one is yz. I have to calculate the partial derivative of this. Again, in these two terms, there are two multiple. There are a multiplication term x squared and y. One multiplication y and z one multiplication so i have to use the multiplication formula 
But now I have to multiply, uh, I have to find the partial derivative with respect to y. So x wala partial derivative goes away. So I don't have to think about the x wala partial derivative. I have to only find the partial derivative of y with respect to y, which is 1, multiplied by the original function, which is x squared. So the first will be simply, oops, wrong color. First will be simply x squared multiplied by the partial derivative of y, which is 1, plus y multiplied by a partial derivative of x squared, which is 0. So the only thing that remains is x squared. But now I move on to the second function, which is yz. Again, yz consists of two functions. One is z, one is y. Partial derivative of z with respect to y is 0. So that part goes away. You have to only find the partial derivative of y with respect to y. That is 1 multiplied by z. So my partial derivative will be x squared plus z. Are we getting this or it is going above our heads? I'm just applying the multiplication formula. And I'm not writing the steps and I'm writing the answer straight away. Do we understand this? Can I have some raise hands? Well done. If this is done, then you should be able to calculate the partial derivative of u with respect to z. I will use the blue pen. Oh, where is the blue pen? I'll use the blue pen. In this, there is no term of z. So partial derivative of this thing with respect to z is 0. The only thing that remains is the partial derivative of yz. yz again consists of two functions. I have to find the multiplication ka partial derivative. Y ka partial derivative with respect to z is 0. So don't worry about the second part. Only worry about the first part. Partial derivative of z with respect to z multiplied by y. So the partial derivative of u with respect to z, I am using shortcut. I am not writing the entire thing. Will be simply equal to y. Why am I writing the answer straight away? Because you should be able to calculate it in your head. Time is of main importance in a JE exam. What I have done here is use the multiplication formula of derivatives and return the answer straight away. Del u by del x becomes 2xy. Del u by del y becomes x squared plus z. Del u by del z becomes y. Are we able to understand this? Can I have some raise hands? Sir. Yes, beta. Sir, can you explain del u by del x? Del u by del x, you have to find the partial derivative of x squared y and partial derivative of y z. Partial derivative of y z, which is green, is 0 because there is no x. This is 0. You just need to calculate the partial derivative of x squared y. x squared y consists of two functions. Partial derivative of y is 0. So that term goes away. You just find the partial derivative of x squared and multiply it by y. Partial derivative of x squared is 2x multiplied by y. That is the entire thing. Do we understand this? Yes, sir. That simple as that. Anyone with any other problem? Now, what is the answer? This is not the answer. This is just the partial derivative. Put it in a formula. You will get the answer. What is this force? This conservative force equal to, I'll just write it. F will be equal to, negative sign will always come. Negative of 2xy i hat. Oops, I've been writing j hat. 2xy i hat minus x square it looks the like very very complicated force don't worry it will not be minus it will be plus because i have taken the minus outside plus y times k hat a very complicated force unlikely to come in je at any point in time but if you understand this this is the toughest question that can ever come in a je in this particular topic So in today's class, what we have done is we have calculated change in internal, oh, again internal, change in potential energy or work done using force. We have already done that before. We again did it. Then we did the reverse of that. The reverse of that process was to calculate force when energy was given. We did it. We'll continue on with this class in the next one and try to wind up in the next one so that we can move on to the last part of this uh, particular chapter this has taken a long time but it is worth this time because this is the most important chapter for you right now at this point in time because well, this chapter will be coming throughout your physics work power energy law of conservation of energy work energy theorem 
This is going to keep on coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming and coming. So I wind up this today's class. I hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything that I can help you with, any doubt, I am very eager to do so. I'll be here. I meet in the next class. I think that will be today's Friday. So that will be on Monday, and uh, you have test on Sunday, and the topic is this chapter and the previous chapter, Newton's laws of motion. See you there. If you any doubts, welcome else. This class is just made. Have a nice day. Keep studying. If you have any doubts, ask.